Do you like browsing second-hand and antique shops? In our house, it's one of those things we sometimes do, but we do it just to see what new thing is being sold as an antique. Of course, one of the troubles with doing that is that it can make you feel very old, very fast. Oh look, we used to have one of those. When it comes to technology, things can move on extremely fast to the next new shiny thing, can't they? Well, my name is Ian Curry, and this is Thinking Out Loud. Come on, let me tell you what I think. Hello. Well, here are three items you've seen before many times in these videos. By now, you might even have some idea how they work, or at least know what they're for. Some of you are like me and happily use things like this in everyday life. Now, of the three, can you guess which order they were invented? Not these particular three, but the general idea. Well, most historians give Marconi from Italy the first radio broadcast, and that was from the Isle of Wight in the south of England. In about 1895, I seem to remember. The telephone? Well, that's just a few years earlier, not very long, and there will be a dispute about who actually invented it, but certainly in the mid-1800s. Now, what about the camera? Any guesses? Was it before or after the radio and telephone? Before? <laughs> well, yes, but how much before? Now, you might get a surprise if you do a little bit of research on that one. The first cameras actually existed hundreds of years earlier than you would think. There's one of these early examples in Edinburgh called a camera obscura. And you can get inside it. It's like a big round room. It's a very basic lens on the roof that, with the use of a mirror, projects the image onto the table in the dark room below of the surrounding city. Now, the idea of capturing the, the image required film, and that part of photography took hundreds of years longer to develop. Pun intended. All three of these inventions landed within a few decades of each other. First, the camera then the telephone, and finally the radio. Now, these days, of course, those three things are combined into our smartphones and would certainly baffle the scientists of old. I've shown you a radio being restored in the past, and that sits here beside me, most of the time anyway. But what about this phone? You've seen it often enough, I'm sure. The technology is very simple, but it still works. Or it would, if I connected it. I brought this one from a market in India the last time I was there. I wonder who used it when it was new. That would be interesting to know, wouldn't it? I love to ask people what their earliest memory of the telephone is. Mine would be growing up in a house that didn't have a phone. Now eventually, of course, we did get a phone, but it was tied to our neighbor's house, and so we had to make sure they weren't using their phone before we tried to use ours. Those lines were called party lines. Do you remember them? I can remember some numbers from long ago, too. Our house had a phone number of 4292. And that was just four digits. Can you remember your first phone number? How many digits will probably date you? Now, years later, Hillary had a budgie that could repeat her home phone number. I would often think of Bobby the budgie, who would say his name, and then give his address, and then 694-222. <laughs> so by the time I got to know Hillary, phone numbers had grown from four to six digits. 
Now these days I have a number with 10 digits, so perhaps there are enough phones in the world by now. Can you imagine knowing what we know now about how these technological wonders of their day work and being somehow transported back to the 1800s. Uh, these items are very easy to understand now and you would know how they work, but it took great minds and clever engineers to get them working in the first place. I often look at things developed long, long ago and although I can easily see how they function, I wonder much more about how anyone would come up with such a thing in the first place. Throughout history, several key inventions owe a lot to discovery more than cleverness too. Being observant and noticing how things interact or relentlessly trying one thing after another until you can make something work is obviously very re rewarding. But I sometimes wonder how close some scientists must have been to a solution to something before giving up and just walking away. And then there's the age-old problem of convincing those around you that what you have invented or discovered has value or is real. And I wonder how many looked at a camera as a novelty or as the radio or the telephone and couldn't really see any practical future for such things a fad that will pass. All that hard work and effort could perhaps have come to nothing except for persistence. Now on the other hand, God seems to have no problem with such things. The Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. Can you imagine? But here's the thing. When I look at the three inventions here, you could say creations, I suppose. I can easily see how they work, and with a little study and a lot of effort, could perhaps even create most of the parts to make new versions of these things. Once an invention is out there, reverse engineering is something that we humans are really very good at. But with God, there is such a vast difference that even gaining a simple understanding of, say, the stars, or as our verse says today, the heavens, takes more brain than I have in my head. Far from being able to say, hmm, that was hard, but now it's done, I can see how you did it. With God's inventions, we get ever more in awe of the inventor the more we dig. Look what he came up with. Looking again at our three devices, I wonder which of the three has had the most impact on our lives. The telephone, perhaps? Well, it is indeed a, in constant use and certainly has sped up communication, hasn't it? But without radio, all our modern phone systems would be useless. Cellular networks and satellite technology rely on radio to function, to carry the data we need to make the modern phone useful. But what of the camera? I think perhaps that has had even more impact. Or well, maybe. It has been used so much to transfer ideas and information, and we remember so much more of what we see than of what we hear, don't we? These days, of course, cameras are everywhere. The stories they tell and the ideas they capture are truly amazing and certainly move us and challenge us in so very many ways. But despite being such wonderful technology that grew from such simple beginnings, these three things are but a blip in comparison to the whole universe and all that's in that. How powerful and vast must God be? I suppose looking at people who invented radio, telephones and cameras, we would say, oh, they were clever. But in comparison to coming up with 
well, our whole universe. Hmm. Well, that's another story, isn't it? Technology certainly is running away with itself. Some new things are truly amazing. Cars that drive themselves, planes that fly themselves, and computers that know when I need to order breakfast cereal. But before we think ourselves oh so clever and start patting ourselves on the back, look up. Look at the wonders God has created for us. And all of a sudden, we might be a little less in awe of each other and a little more in awe of God. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or others like it, subscribe. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking the link and pass on the videos to your friends. Until next time, goodbye.